In our latest report, Hate Crime, Should the Current Offences Be Extended?, we make recommendations to produce a more coherent and effective response to hate crime against all five protected characteristics – race, religion, sexual orientation, disability and transgender identity. Specifically, we recommend a Sentencing Council guideline to ensure that judges make full use of the opportunity the law already gives them to increase the sentences in any case where someone who has been convicted of an offence in which hostility was demonstrated or was a motivating factor. We also recommend that where the judge has found that an offender's crime involved hostility, that fact should appear on their criminal record and on the police national computer, so that in future courts, police and potential employers are aware of the fact. The law needs to send a strong and unequivocal message that hate crime is unacceptable. Consistent and routine use of enhanced sentencing and recording an offender's hostility-based offending on the police national computer would be a powerful way to send that message. The government asked us to consider whether the present aggravated offences, which apply in relation to race and religion, should be extended to apply in relation to disability, sexual orientation and transgender hate crimes. Our consultation provided some strong arguments in favour of extending that protection, not least to ensure that all five characteristics that government has identified for hate crime protection would receive equal forms of protection. However, many consultees also raised serious concerns with the way the existing offences operate. They were concerned that by simply extending the offences, we would not be offering the best solution. Our principal recommendation is, therefore, for a wider government review of all hate crime offending. This review is more likely to lead to effective protection than simply extending the offences in their current form. The terms of our present project, as referred to as by government, did not allow us to conduct such a wide-ranging review ourselves. But if it now goes ahead, a wider review will provide an opportunity to examine a number of things how the criminal justice system might best provide protection for victims of hate crime, which characteristics should be protected by specific criminal offences, how the list of characteristics should be drawn up, what role sentencing should play alongside those offences. All of those matters could be considered in a wider review. The aggravated offences were designed in the 1990s to deal with racially motivated offences, we believe a thorough review of this scheme would provide the criminal justice system with its best opportunity to respond effectively to today's hate crime in all its forms, extending legal protection in the right form to all groups affected by hate crime. It will create a clearer set of principles for the future. A comprehensive review of the kind we think is needed would require government support and resources. If there is no government support for such a review, we recommend, as an alternative but less satisfactory solution, that the aggravated offences should be extended to disability, sexual orientation and transgender identity. This would end the current unequal protection that has resulted from the recent piecemeal approach to legislating in this area. We were also asked to examine whether the existing offences dealing with stirring up hatred on grounds of race, religion or sexual orientation should be extended to cover disability and transgender-related hatred. These stirring-up offences are hard to prove and are rarely prosecuted. They deal with very extreme conduct, threatening communications or material intended to cause others to hate an entire group because of their race, religion or sexual orientation. Consultation provided no clear evidence of this kind of threatening conduct intended to make others hate disabled or transgender people. Whilst there are clearly many people who do communicate offensive material about transgender or disabled people, their conduct is either already caught by existing offences such as the Malicious Communications Act offences or would be unlikely to satisfy the very high test which any extended new offence would require. That would need to prove that someone has acted with the intent of causing others to hate disabled or transgender people. 
creating new offences of stirring up hatred on the grounds of disability and transgender identity would bring very few successful prosecutions. It would impact on rights of free speech, potentially stifling debate and the opportunity to challenge offensive comments. We do not recommend that the existing offences should be extended. Our report, with summaries in English and Welsh, and an analysis of the consultation responses are available on our website.